In 2022, Sandusky, Ohio's premier amusement park, Cedar Point, began removing any mention of their 420-foot Stratocoaster Top Thrill Dragster. Soon after, the park would officially announce the pivotal coaster would return as a reimagined ride experience. On this episode of How It Works, the hidden engineering behind the new ride and the enormous task of renovating one of the world's tallest and fastest coasters. This show is sponsored by Light Rides, a brand new way to bring home your favorite ride. Members of our new Patreon page can get up to 30% off by joining at patreon.com slash amusement labs. Top Throw Dragster's story begins in the early 2000s while the iconic Millennium Force coaster was just opening. Footers popped up for what would become Top Throw Dragster, far and above the tallest and fastest coaster in the world. After opening, Top Throw Dragster would operate as an immediate fan favorite, but its complexity would see it have delays and coveted rollbacks caused by headwinds and underpowering of the ride's unique 120 mile per hour hydraulic launch. After nearly 20 years of operation, the ride would not reopen for the 2022 season, sitting dormant leaving enthusiasts theorizing over its future. All around, people speculated about height extensions, predicting airtime hills, and some making fun of those speculating at all. During the 2023 tour, the park brought enthusiasts past a major construction of a key element that definitely spiked interest, but wouldn't elaborate any further. On August 1st, 2023, Cedar Point announced plans for a completely revitalized ride dubbed Top Thrill 2, with some major alterations and upgrades. This renovation was a truly complete overhaul, bringing in new LSM technology, new trains, paint, even a new manufacturer was selected. Typically associated with flat rides and small roller coasters, manufacturer Zamperla was chosen to design and deliver the renovated ride or reusing as much of the original as possible. This would be Zamperla's first major venture into a project of this magnitude, an opportunity to show off the level of service and engineering they could provide. Now, after 55 years, we are actually on top of the world with something like the Top Thrill 2. The new ride would see its hydraulic launch replaced with a contact-free LSM stator launch lining the launch track. Before construction, the launch track was removed and shipped to Italy to be refurbished and modified with new LSMs compatible with new trains made with more open and accommodating lap bars. With this new design, a high-speed track switch would allow the train to be linked to a new 420-foot rear vertical spike built opposite of the ride's main tower. Traversing the launch multiple times, the train was to shoot back and forth at over 100 miles per hour. These new lightning trains were the result of Zamperla's hard work creating something versatile and enticing for any ride at any park. Its weld-free aluminum unibody design makes these trains not only lighter and faster, but means that they experience less maintenance and more uptime over their lifespan. At a 2023 expo, the new formula-themed trains were revealed showing off their spacious seating, lap bar restraints, and some of the largest wheels we've seen on a coaster. This is done for heat dispersion given the right speed. Originally made by Intamin, this renovation makes Top Throw 2 a launched LSM-powered Stratocoaster. The new trains feature a strengthened frame and two LSM magnetic receiver yokes. These yokes also serve as receivers for eddy current brakes as well. The LSM technology allows for a safe, repeatable, powerful, and contact-free way to propel the train up and down a tower at 74, 101, and 120 miles per hour. To understand more about how these trains are pushed, let's head back to the lab to learn about the launch system of Top Throw 2. Top Throw 2 was also a collaboration with Intersys using their model of LSM stators. The ones used come from the slim stators line of LSMs the company makes, a powerful but low profile LSM fin. What I have here is a small model of the launch track with four LSM stators mounted, two on either side of the center. As you can see, the stators have extremely tight tolerances as these LSM stators need in order to function. During operation, the magnets and LSM stators will come within 5 to 7 millimeters of each other as they travel. Taking a look at this diagram, this is a cross section of the LSM stator mounted on the track. The heart of the typical LSM stator is the iron core that makes up the winding structure and assists with imparting magnetic fields. 
Going around the sections of the iron core are windings set up in a stacking formation and offset to step the fields as they're energized. Additionally, Intrasys has placed additional magnets just under the surface of the stator in order to provide more discrete movements and control. Moreover, during the ride, and should anything happen, LSMs unpowered act as brakes due to the reverse amp properties. These powerful LSM stators utilize up to 3000 amps and feed from supercapacitor banks on the side of the ride. Running this much current is very strenuous, so these fins also have air-powered cooling vents right up against them for temperature regulation. For the launch, the ride's control cabinet does not directly power the LSM stators themselves. Instead, the computer communicates with the subsystem control boards that control the LSMs. The computer tracks the train using proxy sensors and simply tells the subsystem units the target speed and it's their job to use their closed loop system to reach that speed. I often find that having a physical model often makes things easier to understand and it's why I make them for you and why I want you guys to have one. And through the magic of having to buy five, I have a few left and you can get one at amusementlabs.etsy.com. If you really like them, I'll make more like coasters and dark rides and you can get other LED layouts and there's even a special Patreon discount. For example, for just a dollar a month, you can get 10% off anytime by joining at patreon.com slash amusementlabs. Once dispatched, a train advances from the station to the ready block of the ride. If the launch straight is ready, it will proceed into the straight parking position, parking at the start of the stators. The track switch will then slide over and lock while the drive tires lower out of the way. An operator will acknowledge the train and the LSM stators will begin tracking the train as it pushes itself to 74 miles per hour. After stalling on the tower, the train rolls back and the stators immediately detect the train again and begin accelerating to the next target of 101 miles per hour backwards. Shooting the train up into the 420 foot spike, riders look down at the already over 300 foot tall power tower with several seconds of weightlessness on the way back. Finally, the train swings back through the launch to 120 miles per hour and sailing up and over the iconic tower and right over the top. At this point, the track switch can also switch back over to accept the next train as we hit the brakes, as there's no way that it could reverse itself and go back over the tower backwards. After a long stretch at over 100 miles per hour, the train slows down through the eddy current brakes and then slowly progresses and takes a left-hand U-turn back into the station where guests can unload. While Top Throw 2 is different from its single launch predecessor, it offers a longer and more appealing ride for a larger audience and has been received overall quite positively. And that's how it works. If you haven't yet, please subscribe for more deep dives like this, and if you like what we do, you can join our Patreon early access, discounts on light rides, and more. Don't forget to drop a like down below and let us know your thoughts on this dramatic change to Top Thrill Dragster. Do you think it was the right decision for the ride and the park as a whole? Let us know down below. Thanks for watching, stay curious, and I'll see you in the parks.